With my past two longer explainer type videos, I found myself needing to incorporate a lot of different screen recordings and screenshots. And rather than just dropping this B-roll footage onto the timeline and leaving it full screen, my goal was to present it in a very clear and direct way. I wanted to draw attention to the exact concept I was discussing in my A-roll voiceover, ensuring that viewers understood what was important to pay attention to. Beyond that, I also wanted each B-roll clip to have a polished, visually appealing look with a sense of depth that blended well into the overall video. However, I quickly realized that this approach involves meticulously cropping, positioning and scaling each B-roll clip and then adding a whole collection of effects like fade-ins, rounded borders, drop shadows, dimming and blurs. This wasn't just time consuming to set up natively in DaVinci Resolve for each new project, but very time consuming to apply to the hundreds of B-roll clips that often appear in these long form projects. And as an independent creator who's doing every single part of the video creation process himself, finding ways to save time is quite crucial. And with this challenge in mind, I looked into creating a DaVinci Resolve tool to help me reclaim some of that precious editing time. And I'm excited to share with all of you, hope it can help you to save time when creating these types of long form explainer or educational type videos. This is the B-roll fade and finish tool and I'm releasing it completely free. This tool with a simple drag and drop applies the signature fade in, rounded border and drop shadow to your B-roll clips. The best part and what was so important to me is that all visual elements are fully customizable from a single centralized inspector panel. No more jumping between different inspector tabs or multiple viewer options to tweak aspects of each individual B-roll clip. From this single inspector panel, you can fine tune the fading duration and all the visual parameters that I like to use to present B-roll clips in a visually appealing way. And by using on-screen mouse controls with this tool in the fusion overlay option, you can quickly crop, position, angle and scale your B-roll content without having to switch between different viewer options. This tool eliminates the tedious process of manually building these multiple effects and keyframes in each project and provides a more efficient way to adjust the crop, position, angle and scale of the B-roll clip within the scene. For those large projects with hundreds of B-roll clips, the time savings add up and can become quite substantial. Now, as a bonus, I'm also including another tool that I've created in the package. It's called the A-roll blur and dim tool. This one is designed to work alongside the B-roll fade and finish tool. When you apply it to an adjustment clip placed beneath your B-roll clip on the timeline, it adds a subtle fade and blur and dim effect to your underlying A-roll footage. This helps guide your viewer's attention directly to the B-roll, minimizing distractions from your main underlying footage. And just like the B-roll tool, it's customizable, allowing you to adjust the blur fade in duration, blur strength, dim fade in duration, and dim intensity to suit your preferences. Stick around until the end of this video where I'll show you exactly how to download both of these tools for yourself. But first, let's dive in deeper and see how the B-roll fade and finish tool actually works. To cater to different editing styles because we all have our own preferred ways of working, I've included two different variants in the package. First up is the B-roll fade and finish FO variant where FO stands for Fusion Overlay. This is the variant that I personally recommend, especially if you prefer efficiently adjusting your B-roll clips using DaVinci Resolve's built-in Fusion Overlay handles. After you simply drag and drop the B-roll fade and finish FO effect onto your B-roll clip, you can access the Fusion Overlay options by clicking on the dedicated icon and drop down menu in the DaVinci Resolve viewer. Once enabled, you'll find on-screen mouse controls that let you visually crop, position, scale, and angle your B-roll clips. Let's break down what each of these handles and frames actually control right from their initial loaded position. The left handle controls your crop area. This allows you to move which portion of your B-roll clip is visible, ensuring you highlight what you'd like to show. The right handle manages the position and angle of your B-roll clip within your overall video composition, giving you control over its placement. The outer frame is for fine tuning your crop width and height. When used in conjunction with the left handle, lets you dial in the specific area of your B-roll clip that will be shown. And finally, the inner frame controls the scale of your B-roll clip, how large the B-roll clip actually appears within your video composition. If you ever find yourself forgetting what each control does, I've included a short built-in guide that appears at the bottom of the FO variance inspector panel, serving as a quick reminder. 
And just because you're using the FO variant of the tool, it doesn't mean that you're limited solely to the Fusion overlay handles. The sliders in the inspector panel work perfectly, and I personally like to use the Fusion overlay handles for a quick initial crop, position and scale, then fine tune everything with the sliders for further precision. Also, a quick note with the FO variant, your B-roll clip will be slightly offset to the right upon loading. This is intentional. I designed it this way to ensure that both Fusion overlay handles are immediately accessible and visible so you can jump right into editing without having to search for them and separate them. The second variant is the B-roll fade and finish SLD, which stands for sliders. This variant is for those who prefer adjusting the crop, position, scale and angle of their B-roll clips using the traditional inspector panel sliders rather than the Fusion overlay mouse approach. It's all about choice and finding what works best for you. Since the independent Fusion Overlay handle accessibility isn't needed for this variant, your B-roll clip will remain centered within the overall video composition once you apply it. Additionally, you won't find a Fusion Overlay guide in the inspector panel for this variant as it's more designed for those who prefer slider-based control. But aside from these differences, the SLD variant is functionally identical to the FO variant of the tool. Now, let's talk about the bonus A-roll blur and dim tool. It's designed to be placed on an adjustment clip on your timeline. This adjustment clip should sit beneath your B-roll footage but above your A-roll footage, in between the two. Once the tool is dragged onto that adjustment clip, you'll see four sliders in the inspector panel. These are Blur Fade in Duration, Blur Strength, Dim Fade in Duration and A-roll Opacity which lets you set the dim intensity. Overall, these set of controls allow you to fine tune these effects to your liking and help viewers focus solely on the B-roll. Now, let's take a closer look at how I actually use these tools in my own projects, explore some of their features in more detail, and compare the time savings you'll get versus setting up these effects natively in DaVinci Resolve. After you've installed the tools, and don't worry, I'll walk you through that process later in the video, you'll want to open up your effects panel from the top left in the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. Then we're going to bring in our A-roll footage onto video track 1. While you can apply the A-roll blur and dim effect directly to your A-roll footage, for editing flexibility I recommend using an adjustment clip. Especially down the line it gives you more control as you start combining multiple B-roll clips. So with that in mind let's grab an adjustment clip from your effects panel and drag it onto video track 2. Once that's done simply drag and drop the A-roll blur and dim tool from your effects panel onto that adjustment clip on video track 2. And now drop your desired B-roll footage, for example a screen recording, onto video track 3. Finally, just drop your preferred variant of the B-roll fade and finish tool, whether it's the fusion overlay or the slider variant, onto your B-roll footage on video track 3. And just like that, you're set up and ready to start using these tools in a new project. From here, you're free to begin to crop, reposition, angle and scale your B-roll clip. And then you can dive into the inspector panel to fine tune your desired fade in duration, border and drop shadow appearance. All the parameters for this collection of effects are here in one single panel. Regarding the border specifically, you'll find a wide range of options to choose from, giving you lots of different looks. Personally, I like switching the type to vertical and creating a subtle gradient. This makes it look like the border is reacting to light with a nice light and shadow section, adding further depth. Now once you've set this up in your project, you can easily copy and paste these effects across your other B-roll clips. Here's how. First, select your already edited B-roll clip, press Ctrl plus C on your keyboard, then select your target B-roll clip, whether it's a single one or multiple clips, and press Alt plus V. This will bring up the Paste Attributes menu, just make sure that the Fusion Effects option is ticked and you'll be able to paste this effect. You can also access this menu by right clicking on the B-roll clip itself. Of course, any cropping, positioning, angling and scaling you applied to that initial clip will also be copied over. This is perfect if you're pasting it onto a similar B-roll clip, however with many different B-roll clips in one project, you will need to fine tune those specific parameters for each one. But remember that other set parameters like the border and drop shadow will still be valid, even for those different clips, so you'll still save a significant amount of time. There's one other important setting that I want to mention. The fade-in parameter in the B-roll fade and finish tool, and the blur duration and dim duration in the A-roll blur and dim tool can all be set to zero, as in zero frames. This is useful if you want to apply just the border and drop shadow effects from the B-roll fade and finish tool without having the B-roll clip fade in. 
For example, you might already be using cross dissolves to transition between multiple B-roll clips. Or with the A-roll blur and dim tool, you might solely want a blur effect without also dimming the A-roll or vice versa. I've tried to keep that flexibility and choice available to you wherever possible so that it works for your needs. Now, let's look at the actual time savings when comparing these tools with setting up the same effects natively within DaVinci Resolve. Building this natively in DaVinci Resolve can be quite a long process. First, you'd have to create Create a new adjustment clip above your A-roll footage for the blur effect, then drag and drop the Gaussian blur effect onto that adjustment clip, set your desired blur strength, then you'd have to manually keyframe the opacity from 0% to 100% over your desired number of frames. Above that adjustment clip on the timeline, you'd then need to bring in a black solid color from the generators tab in the effects panel. Again, you'd manually keyframe its opacity from 0% to around 50% over your desired number of frames. Then above that solid color, you'd bring in your B-roll footage onto the timeline. Next, you need to drag in the outer stroke effect onto your B-roll footage. Here, you would try to set up your border, which in this native effect has significantly fewer options. For instance, you can't simply round off the edges of your B-roll clip like you can with my tool. You're forced to add some sort of colored border, which might not always look good with B-roll that has different colors at different edges. You also won't have access to create multicolored borders like in the B-roll fade and finish tool. You'd continue setting up a drop shadow in this effect as well. Then you'd have to go back into your video tab in the inspector panel and use the transform and cropping sliders or the different transform and crop tools in the viewer drop down menu to handle your positioning, angling, cropping and scaling of your B-roll footage. And finally, you would navigate to the composite section of the inspector panel for your B-roll footage to keyframe its opacity from 0% to 100% over your desired number of frames. As you can see, that's a lot of steps and a lot of clicking around between different panels just to set up the same collection of effects that are available in the combined centralized panels within the B-roll fade and finish and A-roll blur and dim tools. Plus, because these tools are right in the effects panel of DaVinci Resolve, it's much easier to bring this collection of effects into new projects without the hassle of copying B-roll clips from old projects, trying to save time by pasting in their attributes. I've also put both the native DaVinci Resolve method and my B-roll fade and finish and A-roll blur and dim tools to a time test in terms of efficiency. And as you can see here, right from initially setting up the very first B-roll clip with a full package of effects through to editing a sequence of 10 B-roll clips, you'll see an improvement in efficiency. And remember that in a large project with hundreds of B-roll clips, these time savings add up, freeing you to focus on the other aspects of your videos. Now, these tools that I've created aren't perfect by any means, and I want to be completely transparent about that. For example, I'd love to find a way to use DaVinci Resolve's native crop tool from the viewer to control the cropping of the mask. Ideally, it would be accessible from the same screen as the position and scale handle, allowing for efficient maneuvering of these two parameters without having to switch between the crop and fusion overlay options in the viewer drop-down menu. This would also be clearer than the current two green handles and frames in the fusion overlay variant of the B-roll fade and finish tool. Or better yet, it'd be great to be able to quickly drag a mouse overlay on the B-roll clip and have it immediately crop to that section. But despite my research and attempts, I haven't found a way to implement this. Maybe in the future as I learn more or new DaVinci Resolve features are released. Another thing to note, on rare occasions, and this might have been due to me testing and building the tool during the DaVinci Resolve 20 beta, the B-roll fade and finish tool might prevent the B-roll clip from appearing in the viewer. However, this does seem to be a DaVinci Resolve bug because if it does happen, simply clicking the fusion icon at the top right of the effect in the inspector panel seems to refresh the effect making everything work as intended. So there's a simple fix if you ever encounter it. But regardless of these minor quirks, I've used these tools extensively on my recent 35 minute PC build video, which had hundreds of B-roll clips, and I'm even using it right now for the very same video that you're watching. So they've proven stable and work well enough for my needs and so hopefully can help you too. I've also tested them on different timeline resolutions, including 1080p and vertical timelines, and the tools have worked as intended. So you should be good to go for those resolutions as well. There's always room for improvement and hopefully with time they can be even better, but I believe that they are enough to help you speed up your editing workflow when tackling those long form projects with hundreds of B-roll clips that you want to efficiently stylize and present in your videos. All right, let's look at how to download and install the B-roll fade and finish and A-roll blur and dim tools. It's very straightforward. First, you want to navigate to my personal website, which is alejandrourman.com. I'll also make sure to add a direct link in the video description below, which will take you straight to the tools page, making it even easier for you. 
Once you're on the site, simply click on the Created Tools link in the menu at the top of the page. From there, just click the blue download button to download the .zip package to your computer. Once the .zip package has been downloaded, extract it. You'll find two folders inside, one for the B-roll fade and finish tool and one for the A-roll blur and dim tool. Open up these folders and you'll see the .drfx files within them. Now simply open up any project in DaVinci Resolve and navigate to the edit page. It can be a fresh project or an existing one. Then double click the .drfx file from the extracted A-roll blur and dim tool folder. After the prompt appears in DaVinci Resolve, just hit the install button. Next, navigate to the extracted B-roll fade and finish tool folder. From here, choose your desired .drfx file variant, either the FO fusion overlay or the SLD sliders variant of the B-roll fade and finish tool. If you need a quick reminder of the differences, there's a short description just below the download buttons that explains what each version is for. Then just double click the .drfx file and after the prompt appears in DaVinci Resolve, just click the install button and you're done. The tools are now installed and ready to be used. You'll find them located in the Fusion Effects section of your effects panel in DaVinci Resolve. But yeah, ultimately my hope is that these tools help you save time when creating these types of long form explainer or educational videos. And these tools did take quite a bit of time learning and combining my own code and expressions with DaVinci Resolve's macro tool to create. So if you try them out and find real value in them and that they actually do make your editing more efficient, please do consider subscribing here on YouTube. It genuinely helps support the channel and allows me to continue bringing content like this for you. And if you have any questions, feedback about these tools, or you've used them in your own projects and would like to share what you've created, I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to leave a comment down below. All right, guys, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.